everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 27 of my book of read. Let's get going. So this is going to be my top filler reads, which is going to be an interesting discussion just because I haven't had a thriller, top filler read in such a long time. So I don't know how this is going to work. My most recent one was The Hacienda. So we are going to talk about this one. I, even though I kind of touched base already, I just wanted to show it off anyways. But yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Let's get going. So my first book is The Hacienda by Isabel Canales. So this is like Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca. Set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence at the remote house and sinister haunting and a woman pulled into the clutches. So, I gave it a four stars. I love this book. I really thought it was great. I love the mystery. I love the plot. It was just so good. I did enjoy the plot. There were times when the plot was kind of dragging on. That's why it's a four star. I don't say I would have given it five stars. Which never happens, but I'm excited for it. Uh, but I really did like the suspense of it, though the characters were okay, and some of the poems was a little bit tiring just to listen to them. But regardless, I did like the crazy times when Beatrix and Andres had, and I did like the ending. I thought it was suitable and realistic. If this was a real life book, I thought the ending was realistic, so kudos on that and I really like spoilers like the human behind the wall I really I really like that part because it kind of made Beatrice just like to give a little dump to herself and, and she like didn't really see that so I really like the dumpness of it and even though it ended up being true so I did really really like that part and yeah I really like Adler's and I really like his story and which sounds interesting, but I really wish we had gotten more of it. My next book is The Inheritance of Ocridia the Vineyard by Zoraria Cordova. So this is determined to see what's left of the family and uncover the truth behind inheritance. The four descendants travel to Ecuador to the place where Ocridia buried her secrets and broken promises and never looked back. So I gave it a four stars. I really love this book as well. I did have, I did love how we got to learn about the characters and the family of the story. I also liked how the story was playing when it had eventually led up to the villain story. The mystery of the book was nicely done as well, but I also like how at times the book was being a little overwhelming, but the overwhelming wasn't a bad thing, it was really nicely done. Sometimes it was hard to keep when the story was going. I did like the themes of family and acceptance that were played out through the book. Sometimes with the book, uh, there were certain parts where it had too much details and it was sometimes dragged out but kind of breaking like the plot's flow. Regardless, I really did love the writing of the book. If I felt as though it was enchanting. I, I mean, I really like the ending as well. I thought it was fitting, even though it was sad. But I really think it was a perfect ending of the book. And I almost came up the feeling that Cordelia's had come to terms with herself and how it was able to have a peaceful death. My next book is Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. Straddling Ivy's contemporary sub suburban town and her mother's magic trench, 1990s Chicago. The spiritual and propulsive story rockets toward a conclusion guaranteed to keep readers up all night. So I gave it a four stars. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought the characters were kind of okay. So I really like how scary it was. It was really stunning and fun. The romance, it was okay. It kind of had like four paragraphs of it, but it's fine. Um, I didn't really like the perspective if I'm more shared. I didn't really care much about the flashbacks. Of the month, I kind of loved the current day Nana. If I had only stuck with that, I think the book would have been much better. So I really thought the story was a good, did a good job of a tale. There kind of a couple of aspects that kind of lost me. Some scenes had like a fever dream type quality to them, and 
it was okay. I don't really like the fever dream kind of thing. So I really did like the book. I thought it was intriguing. I thought it was a mystery. I did love the atmosphere of it. It was just so dark and moody. I really did like it. It kind of it had magic and witchy vibes. Who doesn't love witchy vibes? So I do like the relationship between Ivy and her mom, and it was complicated, that was for sure, but I thought it was nicely done and how well it played out. So it was really beautiful just to see the mom to accept like her daughter's strength and power. I really thought that was beautiful, so I thought that was like really nicely done. So I don't really agree with Dana's choices as a mother. But I could kind of sympathize with her in a little bit. But I really enjoyed how Elba built her characters to the point where it was easy enough to understand the motives. So I thought that was really, really nicely done. My next book is The Cousins by Kevin and The entire story family has secrets. Whatever pulled apart years ago isn't over. And this summer, the cousins will learn everything. I gave it a 4 stars. So I really did like the writing. I thought it was effortless, a little bit addicting. Um, there was like some mystery aspect of the book was kind of missing something to it, which is why it's a 4 star. I wasn't really filled with curiosity for most of the book. I was just like, oh okay, that, so that happened kind of thing. I wasn't really curious enough. Um, but I really did enjoy the book. I thought it was great. The island resort setting was really nice. And so I, from all the murderer and small town stories I had ever read, so I do enjoy a fresh new set things for a murderer to take place. So I did like when the author created the protagonist, but I like Millie, Aubrey, and Joanne, so I just wanted nothing but the best for them. The setting characters and the story family, Secret Looking, was really enough to really get my interest on. I thought that part of the book was really quite fascinating and intriguing. I think the end had a, like, a really great twist and concluded nicely for the story family. So I really enjoyed that. I didn't think it was clunky. I thought it was just a perfect ending for the way how things were supposed to be. My next book is The Ballerinas by Major Campbellic Dale. The daily meets Black Swan and Luckiest Girl Alive about a trio of ballerinas who meets a student at the Paris Opera Ballet School. I gave it a 4 stars. So I really like how the narrative was moving slowly to reveal Delphine's secrets and the surprising conclusions. So which can underline how the past can be haunting. I thought that was nicely done. I just like how it brought everything together just to re reveal how haunting the past can be. The fascinating parts of the novel is the real realities of what's it like to be a ballerina. It's tough. You need time. You need to be dedicated, committed to it. It's really not easy to be a ballerina. So I just like how the author managed to pull it off and just show it to the world like, hey, being, being a ballerina has its own complications as well. So I like that part. I thought it was really nicely done. So this book is really a character driven story, which sometimes made me kind of lack some at times point. Because I'm not, I like plot driven instead of character driven. Unless it's done right, I don't mind it at all, but this was really heavily character driven. So obviously I enjoyed it because I gave it a 4 star, so kudos to that. So the other thing I really like is how the ballet has been used as an ex exaggerated metaphor for the painful things that all women face in the society of the age. I thought that was really beautiful as to how the author did that. It was you know, the desire to be beautiful, the limited amount of time unlikely to women to, to succeed, so on and so forth, why the man has it easy. So I really like that part, since in this book it's like the man has influence and power and things like that. So I thought that was also really nicely done for this book as well. The one issue I had was the timeline of this book. Sometimes it would go from here to here to here to here. And then it had a nice flow, which I really wanted to have, but 
animals I just really love this book, so I thought it was really interesting and quite a different story than all the normal thrillers that I have ever read, so this was actually quite refreshing. So I really enjoyed it a lot. And this book would, would also be great if you like ballet, so what have you got to lose? It did kind of remind me of Black Widow. I forget what movie that was, but it was Age of Ultron, I think that was it. And when Black Widow was seeing some path from her past with the ballet and all that, so it did remind me of that book, of that movie at times, so, so I thought that was really fun. But okay, so those are my top thriller reads. I have not had a thriller read in such a long time. Well, my top thriller read. So I'm really glad that Hasiana just finished it off for me for this for September. So, yeah. I hope I find more books that will be in my top thrillers. It's been a while, so yeah. But anyways, let me know what's your top thriller is. And please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!